This is an introduction to significant figures in calculations. To illustrate the use of significant figures in calculations, we will calculate the area of a sheet of paper. To find the area, we multiply length times width. So if we take 15.26 centimeters multiplied by 10.84 centimeters, we wind up with 165.4184 square centimeters. As we have already learned, almost all measurements have some uncertainty, leading us to assume that the last digit of both the length and width is uncertain. From there, we completed the table assuming that the last digit is uncertain and calculating the area for each variation in the last digit. If we were to analyze the answers, we would see that the hundreds place is certain, the tens place is certain, and the ones place is certain in all cases. However, when we get to the tenths place, we see some variation, and this is where the uncertainty begins. Since we define significant figures as all of the certain digits in a measurement plus one uncertain digit, this means we should round all the answers off to the nearest tenth. More importantly, we should see that all of the answers have four significant figures which leads us to this rule for rounding for multiplication and division. This rule tells us that our answer should be rounded so it contains the same number of significant figures as the measurement having the fewest significant figures. As we can see from the example above, the length had four significant figures and the width had four significant figures. The fewest of four and four is four, which means our answer should be rounded to four significant figures. This explains why the uncertain digit in each answer lies in the fourth digit. There is a similar rule for rounding as it pertains to addition and subtraction, and it reads like this. It says that our answer should be rounded so it contains the same number of decimal places as the measurement having the fewest decimal places. Notice that the key difference is that the rules for multiplication and division specify significant figures, and for addition and subtraction, it specifies decimal places. To apply the rule for addition and subtraction, let's consider this example. If we sum the values together, we wind up with 185.52 centimeters. Since 128.6 and 53.2 go out to the tenths place, this means we should round our answer off to the tenths place, and we wind up with 185.5 centimeters. To illustrate why the rules are different for addition and subtraction, notice what happens if we change 3.72 to 3.73. The answer changes out in the hundredths place. But if we change 128.6 to 128.5, we can see that the answer changes in the tenths place. Consequently, if one of the measurements has fewer decimal places, then the calculated answer will have fewer decimal places as well.